Okay, with the new Source 2 SDK uh, on the horizon, I was recently asked a question how to properly decompile materials. Uh, and so in this video, I'm going to just cover some, uh, some po points about uh, compiled materials in Source 2, as well as uh, exporting materials, or at least as best as one can, and uh, also exporting models from Hammer. So an issue with working in Source 2 is that most, if not all, of the model files that are part of a, uh, a game are all compiled. And a fully compiled file is more or less read-only. As far as I'm aware, there are no ways to just make a quick duplicate that one can edit. So you can't necessarily go in and like really tweak uh, compiled models. And these can be very, very frustrating to, to work with because you can't analyze how certain materials uh, were compiled by Valve or uh, how certain models are broken down, like particularly character models. So I'm just going to go over a sort of rudimentary way to not necessarily decompile these models, but at least export them in a way that they're at least somewhat usable. Um, so I'm going to go with a model that is not publicly available. Right now, Valve has plenty of the Dota 2 heroes uh, publicly available to download from the workshop site. But if you are if you are, if you're in the future working with the Half Life Alex Source Two SDK uh, and want to export um, like head crabs or uh, zombies or other props to manipulate or alter, you're probably not going to have much luck being able to decompile them. I don't know the major differences that are going to be compared to like with their tools compared to these ones, but this will be a just simple breakdown on how to sort of navigate this particular issue. Uh, so first things first, you want to gonna hit, you're going to want to hit the tools drop down in the asset browser and turn on show hidden assets. What this will do is show uh, the compressed uh, texture images that are plugged into the vmat shader file. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to export this uh, this Aegis, which is just a generic trophy model. Um, there are a bunch of different like textures here for the ages. Uh, we're just going to get the default one. Uh, I'm also going to do a quick rundown on how to sort of restore a green normal map to a usable blue normal map. Um, the way Source 2 compiles normal maps is they discard the blue channel and just use the red and green channels. I'm not entirely sure how that is uh, specifically done, but I have been able to sort of I guess reverse that kind of uh, breakdown into a sort of more usable format. So the programs that I'm gonna be using to uh, adjust and preview these uh, after exporting uh, are going to be Marmoset, Toolbag, Blender, and Photoshop. So first things first, we are going to get the model. So we're gonna find our Aegis model, here it is. And we're going to load up Hammer. So you can't export a model from the model browser uh, if it's being compiled. It just won't let you. It's very frustrating. So we do have a workaround. It is just dropping the damn thing into Hammer. So I'm going to drag the model from the asset browser into Hammer. I'm going to situate it in the center of the map. So if I if I hold right click and I can use in the in the 3D view, I can use W A S D to orient this. There we go. You see that that's there. It's selected. We're going to hit file. We're going to hit export file. And you can save it as a data model, DMX, Wavefront OBJ, or an FBX. I always use uh, DMX just because, uh, just because I find FBX and OBJ typically don't really give me anything usable. So I'm going to save this just as Aegis model. I'm going to save this to my Dota working folder. And that's done. I'm going to close this. Don't save that. Uh, then I'm going to launch Blender. 
Uh, so I'm going to go over some other side effects that come from uh, exporting in Hammer. So I'm going to import. Uh, I'm going to expect you already have the source tools installed in Blender um, beforehand. I'm using Blender 2.79. I haven't moved on to 2.8 just yet, uh, but the process is more or less the same. So I'm going to go find that model. There it is. I'm going to import it. And as you can see, it's really, really big. So if I orient my camera to the front, I can see that it is not properly oriented. I'm going to rotate it on the z-axis by 90 degrees, get it all centered. Rotations. Also going to just adjust my grid for a second. There we go. So first things first, it inverts the UV map. I'm not quite sure why, but it just does. Um, and I can't just flip it because it will flip it along a centered axis. Uh, so as long as I don't uh, like click anywhere to move the uh, this center cursor, I'm just going to set my pivot point to the 2D cursor. I'm gonna hit Control M, Y axis. Let's leave it at that. I'm going to then Make sure uh, element snap is at the increment. Grab, hold control, drag it up, and have it centered like that. So I don't know why exporting models from Hammer inverts the UV map, but it just does. So that is one issue I wanted to cover before getting into uh, ripping the texture files up. So now we want to get the texture. As far as I am aware, again, this is just, I don't know if other people have discovered better, more reliable ways of extracting materials. This is just the best way I've been able to figure it out is, um, I can't just copy this uh, 1024 by 512 map out. I have to like drag my preview out until it's like as big as it gets. And so, and it seems like this is as big as the preview gets. So that's the highest texture size. And I am literally print screen, uh, print screening the screen, uh, my uh, screen using well the print screen key on your keyboard and just copying that into Photoshop and cropping it out. It's literally the only way I know how to do that. Um, hang on, I'm actually gonna do that again with the other materials. So that is as big as it gets. There we go. Hit screen that, and I'm also going to get the other materials. So I'm going to hit a new file, paste that in there, and I'm also going to get normal. And what the heck, I'll get this shader mask, which if you're familiar with the way Valve likes to compile their uh, shaders, a single shader texture stores different shading color information in the RGB channels. So red is probably likely uh, specular intensity, green is probably rim light intensity, and blue is probably specular exponent or tint base, uh, depending on how the shader is set up. This looks like it might be tint base. I'm not entirely sure, uh, but I'll just get it for posterity, but I'm sure most people just want the normal map and the color map, uh, and can worry about shaders later. You can re-import all of this stuff back into Source 2. So like if I wanted to make my own custom like colored, uniquely colored Aegis, I could do that. I would have to completely set up the material uh, myself, but navigating and working in the material editor is a different tutorial in and of itself. I may record that at a later date. Uh, anyway, so I am going to now crop this texture That is that inverse crop. There we go. And just double check our image size is 1024 by 512. You want to make sure both of your dimensions are a multiple of two or a power of two. So now we have this color. I'm going to save that out as its own target file. I'm going to save that in the same 
place we've saved our ages. So I'll just call this ages color. And now converting this normal map. So I'll get to that, but just so we have everything all situated, I'm just going to open up my ages color. And there it is. So we've successfully gotten the color map out. Unfortunately, this is a compressed texture, so it's not really the highest resolution. You could easily uh, bring this into a program like Waifu2x and uh, upres it uh, using a neural network system, but uh, this is good enough just for this tutorial. So now to make sure the normal map is working, I'm just gonna preview this in Marmoset Toolbag. So export that. This is an OBJ. Same folder. Pages. OBJ. Selection only. Don't write materials because I just don't like the way Blender exports OBJs. Import it. Pages OBJ. Now, here it is. Put in Pages color as the albedo. So it's still really flat. No real nice reflections. So I'm gonna fix that by restoring this normal map. So the way I find, the best way to do this is go to the blue channel, make this completely white. Uh, green channel should be fine. Red channel, sometimes I'll just hit auto tone and that can normally be enough. Um, you've, the green channel might also need to be brighter or have higher contrast. You want the sort of this sort of background light uh, to be 50% gray. So in this case, auto tone levels. It's it's just going to be screwing with the brightness and contrast a lot until you get it working. If there, if if anyone knows like any better way to sort of uh, to like bat, sort of reverse engineer a green normal map, uh, please let me know in the comments because I do not know how green normal maps normally work. This is something that's beyond me. So this is forty nine percent. That's fine. It's close enough. Uh, and this is forty three percent. I will make that just a little brighter, just a smidge. Check that. 47, a little bit brighter. Check that again. 52, uh, whatever, it's fine. So if I then go back to RGB, you can see this looks so much, this looks significantly more like a regular normal map one would expect to see in, like, coming out of a texture baker. So I'm just going to call this Aegis normal. Back to Marmoset. That's not Marmoset. Go to normal map. Plug that in. And that is, I would definitely say that is plenty good enough for uh, for use uh, outside of the Dota 2 engine. In fact, that's actually pretty damn good. Uh, turn the metalness up a bit on this default shader. Maybe make the sky a little brighter so you can see it better. Make it nice and glossy. You can see those nice reflections. Yeah. Uh, something tells me that this this might have an edge split on it. So I'm just going to quickly check that. But um, something like. Uh, Oh yeah, these definitely have edge splits on them. So, uh, so that's something you're not going to get out of. Uh, that's something you're not going to get out of the. Uh, oh wait, no, I did get an edge split. Huh. Maybe I'm wrong, but uh, I'm just going to go ahead and say that this is probably perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah, the normal map seems to be reflecting on it just fine. All right, oh, that is basically more or less how one can uh, export uh, models and materials out of 
the Source 2 engine, uh, if, that, if it's a compiled read-only format. The only caveat to this particular method is you cannot export uh, deformed or animated or rigged uh, objects like this. So the reason I chose this uh, Aegis is because it's static. It really only has one joint, which is its root joint, and it's tied to this uh, little idle animation. Um, you could make your own skeleton for this, name the, the joint root, and export these animations uh, using the same methods described in some of my other tutorials and get the same animation. But if you wanted something like this hermit crab, uh, which has a nice cute little Aegis on its back, you could not export um, this completely. You would more or less get the static bind pose. Um, uh, I don't know if I can see its bind pose. Oh, there it is. So you would more or less get this. This is what you would get if you exported this from Hammer. And uh, when you export a DMX from Hammer, it does not save any vertex uh, data. So uh, if I exported the skeleton for this hermit, hermit crab uh, out of Source Filmmaker and exported the model for, from Hammer, uh, yeah, the animations from the skeleton would work, but the model would have no vertex data tied to uh, uh, tied to the skeleton. So I wouldn't be able to just slap the skeleton on it and have it work. I would have to effectively re-rig this entire crab from scratch using uh, the skeleton data. And I, I have had to do that, um, porting, uh, making a custom uh, Rashawn model for Midas Mode 2. Um, it, is not, it, it isn't fun, but it was like the only option available to us. So uh, this is the only major downside is that from using this method is that you can't export um, rigged uh, character models or just rigged geometry in general because you will not get any vertex data and you will have to uh, re-rig it all by yourself. Uh, if anyone knows a way around that little caveat, please let me know, because it would be very, very useful. Anyway, that's just about uh, everything in terms of uh, exporting models and materials. So if you do have any questions, please let me know.